human beings are asking you to do things to them that not just anybody would. I think drawing on people is pretty neat. My name is Nate Howard. I'm known as uh, Mammoth Press in the, in the comic scene, but Mammoth Inc. here at Cryptic Tattoo and Social Gallery. We're a tattoo studio and a uh, art education, art lesson gallery uh, here in Springfield, Missouri. Essentially, we make tattoos, but we also figured that we're a talented group of artists. Felt felt like we had a lot to share as far as the, the community outreaches, you know, paintings and, and still life drawings and uh, photography, as well as a podcast series that started off as a tattoo focused podcast has grown into bringing in other talented artists from other other industries to uh, to learn about them we don't exactly know what we want to be when we grow up but at the very least when you show up you're you're going to get an awesome tattoo from very talented very friendly you know people i get a test to that <laughs> <laughs> What made you decide to do go from art to wanting to do tattoos? That's a really good question. I did not actually intend to get into tattoos. It was never really on my radar. There are some artists uh, in, in the scenes that I piled around with that got into tattooing, but it was never really like a line that I ever even considered. But then COVID happened. We lost uh, a very like heavy hitter in the uh, both comic and uh, and tattoo scene, uh, Kevin Watkins, who was a manager of a studio that some friend of mine worked at. And so after COVID calmed down, I decided to get my first tattoo. I was 36 years old, so that was really my opening to sit down and just have a chat. The owner of the establishment said, you know, honestly, if you haven't considered doing tattoos yourself, maybe you should. I think you'd be really good at this. And I joked like, what, are you going to teach me? He's like, yeah, I'll totally teach you. And then two days later, I was like, okay, I, let's try this. And I've been doing it ever since. That was three years ago, just shy of three years ago. It was stressful. It was um, very difficult to learn. I was th very thankful for the opportunity. And he gave me a sandbox to play in and I didn't bury myself alive in it. Just the stress alone, if I've gone through that much, if I was making myself throw up in a parking lot, you know, out of <laughs> nerves and, and fear, like I'm not just gonna stop doing it. It's a very condensed version of it, but yeah. Do you enjoy one more over the other, just regular drawing and doing your comics or doing tattooing? They are completely different. I look forward to the opportunity of both of those platforms kind of crossing streams from time to time. You do art in one way, like for animation, mm -hmm. like being blue collar artists, you do animation art for animation. There's de definitely set rules and styles. Tattooing does not bleed into those things. When I'm do when I'm drawing for a tattoo, I have a completely unique style, and, and things look much different on skin than they do on screen. I like both for their own reasons, but it's kind of different for me to rewire how I've been as a graphic designer and illustrator. From the peanut gallery, best medium to work on. We're talking paper. We're talking iPad screen. We're talking no. skin. I'm a blue collar guy, as in like I'm good at being told what to do. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, okay, what do you need? When do you need it by? What is this going to be used for? Those three pieces of information, I'm usually like, okay, cool, I got you. And then you do it. They're like, cool, approved, send money, and then move on to the next. Very impersonal. But when it comes to tattooing, you're dealing directly with the client. 
you're having that interaction with with people during you're almost like a therapist in some cases that part you never get that in graphic design like that oh, i love it <laughs> there's no brick and mortar store where somebody's like you know what i just want to i just felt weird and it's like uh Im impulse logo can i get a banner for no reason like those things never happen <laughs> Um, when it comes to medium, I've been lucky so far. Most of my tattoo clients haven't combative or noisy. I've never, I've never had paper or an iPad fight me. And thankfully so far, no, no violence have come from my, the other side. I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> now he says something. I don't really have a, a, a personal like relationship with any Bristol board or any iPad screens. I think drawing on people is pretty neat. Human beings are asking you to do things to them that not just anybody would. Well, it was a walking advertisement for you. It is. That's true. Yeah. It's kind of that there is a disconnect for me to realize, oh no, that's going to be there for the rest of their life. <laughs>
Weird is a weird is a hard question. Okay. Got one. It's going to be hard to talk about this without like throwing shade on the guy. And I really don't want to, but, but there was a young couple that came in and they were wanting uh, each other's names. She wanted his name on her neck. Mm -hmm. and he wanted her name above his eyebrow. Face tattoos, just like hands, those are a big deal. Those are one of those things that we have to give everybody the, the talk. Like, are we just going to give you the dad talk? You heard, you, we made our piece, we'll move on. That wasn't the problem. The problem was that whenever I put the stencil on his, his forehead just to size it up, just to make sure it sits right, and he's looking in the mirror, and he goes, you know what? Can I have it flipped reversed so that it reads correctly when I look at it in the mirror? And I thought I should pull the reins on this and just double check. Instead, I sat out loud to where his girlfriend could hear, you want me to flip this reverse so it reads opposite to everybody else, but you could read it in the mirror. She said nothing. So I'm like, okay, I guess we're going to do this. And so, yeah, I put, a, I put a girl's name backwards above an eyebrow on a dude's face. His body, his choice. That was interesting. He was hoping her name was a lum. He was <laughs> <laughs> oh no that would have been funny let's also hope they're still together halfway through one of the other artists was like so how long have you guys been together they've only been together for like a couple months oh okay here's another fun one who is the bigger wimp men or women uh men <laughs> yeah. very very short and concise I don't think anyone's surprised <laughs> well, there's, there's, a, there's a range of and I mean I hesitated for a second because wimp is kind of a strong term but like um myself included when it comes to like first timers we try to we try to explain like okay this is what you can expect guys have this tendency to overthink and over like over create what it's going to be like and the, and get their stress and their nerves up in my own case and my own experience um far more guys have passed out in the chair than, than women and I think it's just nerves. In my experience, and this is my own opinion, there's no, no data to back this up. Women just have a higher threshold or an ability to tolerate pain. What was your favorite tattoo you've ever done? A buddy of mine had actually hit me up. He's a huge Iron Maiden fan. We would be doing a uh, Rime of the Ancient Mariner, like digital painting of Eddie, you know, in the clouds mm -hmm. and the lightning striking this like pirate ship. And there's, you know, like, it was just this really epic, ocean scene with Eddie in the clouds, you know, like casting lightning and it, it, it looked cool. And he fell in love with it. It worked out really well. I got to play with colors I hadn't played with before. I, I got to take basically my acrylic style techniques mm -hmm. and see how they work on, on skin. And it was just a big deal to me. We actually competed at Carnival of Ink. It was the first time I ever brought it to, to a show. The judges that saw it liked it. it I don't think it placed. <laughs> I didn't win anything. But it was the perfect bow on like an awesome piece and and i got to spend time with like my best friend that i don't get to see very often it was a great experience that was one of the first times i'm like that was uniquely mine and that was a unique style that like maybe i'm not just an artist that does tattoos maybe i'm a tattoo artist who knows have you ever advised a client against a tattoo like this is a bad idea i don't think you're gonna like it and then after it was done they were like oh yeah you were right i should have done that <laughs> <laughs> thankfully most of the time if i push back on a design idea or a placement idea like most i don't think i've had a single person like insist anyway hand tattoos finger tattoos face neck because those are job killers mm -hmm. and i know that that's not cool or hip for a tattoo artist to say i know that we've come a long way as an accepting tattoo but like anything on your, to any employer who's looking to invest in somebody, like to have these, even if it's great art, that stuff dictates a big part of how you move on in life. Like, you know, and that's, and it sucks. I know it's the grown up dad, whatever. <laughs> you don't need your tattoo artist to tell you this is going to change your life and probably not for the good, the best of ways. Also, they hurt. Hands are one of the most, and fingers, some of the most painful spots that you can get a tattoo. And on top of that, they don't heal very well. So it's like you you want to have this master plan for your hands, but you're going to have to take care of your hands in ways that you it could easily fall out. And you may take multiple sessions, especially in the fingers. If you're adamant about getting it, a really good piece of artwork on your hands or your neck or your face, like it absolutely, you can do it. Like, and we're talented enough to do it. Just be aware of the consequences.
Basically what I had done was three puppy dog tracks. What inspired it was the most recent death of my 15 year old Boston Terrier. But then I thought the three, because I've had three dogs in my life that meant something to me. So one paw print for each puppy. I gave him the idea and he drew three individual puppy prints for me. This did not hurt nearly as much as the ones on my back. I was hooked before I got this, but it's like <laughs> now that I, you know, have a, an artist that I actually trust, yeah. um, I definitely have a lot more ideas. You can see the difference right. in, the, in the different, like the toes and the You said there were three pad. different dogs and I wanted it to look like a single concept. podcast is Artistry Unearthed on YouTube and Spotify. CrypticTattooGallery.com. Uh, we are on Facebook and Instagram. You get to meet all the artists on the website, give us bio backgrounds and stuff on each individual artist. You get to see some of their work. Our Instagram is fed straight there, so you can kind of browse through and see each, each artist style. The website is a very useful tool um, to kind of meet us and see what we're about and um, send off requests and get quotes and stuff. But also all of us uh, individually, we're independent contractors. Everybody, everybody runs their own ship. So you can get a hold of any of us on our Facebook or Instagrams. Um, we do field walk-ins, but a lot of people call in ahead of time and then they come in for consultations. Who are you? Where are we? And what do you do here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, good news. I'm fine. <laughs> he didn't pass out. Yeah, so. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>